All right. Thanks for being here, crew. Hey, Bridge. <laughs> so let's start. We got a, a seat where we can feel some ground underneath us, our legs, our pelvis. Now let's connect to our, our deep ujjaya breath. We'll just start to lift and grow the low back bones away from the sit bones. Lifting, growing the mid back bones away from the low back bones. It's just these little incremental upliftments. Starting to fill the lungs more completely. Start sensing into that heart space, lung space. The heads of the shoulders. And the tongue is part of our posture. You might just try this out. This is um, uh, kind of a meditation postural technique. You can place the tip of your tongue very lightly behind your front two teeth and touching the roof of the mouth. So it's touching the, the skin of the roof and the bone that's teeth, and then just permit the tongue to drape down from that point. The tongue is an integral part of our posture, our movement. And as you relax that tongue muscle, Feel the, the neck bones and the neck muscles. It's gently growing, softening, revealing a little more space. Let's take one additional moment to practice breathing in and through the top of the head, the skull bones. So in our practice today, we'll be working in and along the entire spine or the entire core. Okay. So I'll be walking us through all of these areas from the, the skull through the brain and the throat and the heart and the diaphragm and all the way down to the tailbone. If you determine that there is an area along your core that is of particular interest to you, let's just keep that in mind. Because we can always use that as a, a home base, a return point.
So we'll work some rounds of Kapalabhati. Kapalabhati, the short, sharp nasal exhalations. And then we'll regroup after some moments and we'll work some, some other stuff. So let's plan on about 50 or 60, five zero, six zero, pumps, Kapalabhati. Feel for pumping, moving, distributing this breath all the way through your core. Yes into the brain and yes into those skull bones and behind those eyes. So when you're ready, let's do that. Begin. We'll take a moment to establish our deep breath. And that little shift in gas exchange. Because Kapalabhati does change the, the way the gases are carried in, and, and in the blood. You, some people find that it gets a little buzzy. Some things get clearer, more wakeful. We'll take a second round, about 50 or 60 pumps, and the focus is core. So can I get that pumping through the core, through all areas of the core, and yes, to the brain and the skull bones. Begin. And we'll take a moment and again resume ujjaya breath. That light tongue tip contact behind the front of the teeth. All right. I'm going to select Bhadakonasana. Uh, for rounds of Uddiyana. If you would prefer setting your legs out and straddle, let's leave that option open. But I'm going to select Bharakonasana. And with that Bharakonasana, I'll use hands to prop myself more vertically. So fingertips press down, feet press together, inhale. Right from the ground, through the perineum, right through the space of the pelvis and into the guts, diaphragm, spreading the ribs, lifting the chest bones, washing the brain, hold the breath, and soften through your core. Bring the hands forward. Swiftly exhale. You can exhale out the mouth. And we'll remain empty. Pooling back from the perineum. So the genitals, the anus, there's, there's engagement there. Pooling back. You'll feel the musculature, the tissue moving back on that pubic symphysis, those pubic bones. Kind of drawing, lifting, pooling, moving, softening through core, gliding the shoulders away from the ears. And relax. 
relax the belly when you need a breath. And we'll come up right. Let's take a few deep breaths. There's we'll do this a couple of ways. And one more time. Use the fingertips to help prop you vertically. And then gently reach the sit bones down. Inhale as if drawing the breath from the ground beneath you through the perineum, the space of the pelvis, the abdomen, diaphragm, rib cage. As the lungs fill, the heart, washing that breath up through the brain. Hold. Soften internally. And as you soften, feel if your attention, your, your feeling awareness seeps in. Bring the hands forward. Swift, thorough exhale. Remain empty. Draw the belly in. And back. And while we're empty, use the hands. Gently pull. Lengthening through the waist. Lengthening the chest away from the sit bones. Releasing when you need a breath. Resume your ujjayi breath. Now there's one more part that we'll do. <coughs> so we're going to stack those two techniques really closely together. So we're going to do about 50 pumps kapalabhati and go right into one round of uddiyana. Make sense? So we're, we're not going to pause or rest. 50 pumps, and as soon as you conclude, You'll inhale, you'll hold, exhale, and draw in. So here we go. 50 pumps, Kapalabhati. We'll start there. And I'll talk us through. Immediately following the Kapalabhati, take one deep inhale. Go slowly so that your, your chest muscles, your rib muscles, your gut may feel soft upon expansion. Hold. And you might find you can hold your breath a little bit longer immediately following that Kapalabhati. Bring the hands forward and one last round, Uddiyana, exhaling everything out, remaining empty, lowering the chin, drawing the belly in, back up. Relax the belly when you need a breath. <laughs> All right. We'll change the cross of our legs. So we got the left leg down on the ground and the right knee uh, pointing up, tented up toward the sky. We're going to do this a little bit differently. So Rather than doing a twist where we're putting an arm over the thigh, we're going to do this for the, so just a nice little piece for the back of the shoulder. I'm going to take my left hand, 
and I just wove it under my, between my thigh and my calf, just a little, little peekaboo. <laughs> there it is. So my palm is facing you, and I've flexed my wrist, so my fingertips are up. Okay, that's it. My right hand for balance if I need it. So right hand may push. Inhale. You can push the chest up. And now exhale, use this left hand, this open left hand, like you're pulling the elbow back. So this is a, a slightly new way to move into the twist. So I'm pulling my knuckles back into my leg. And it's lighting up the back of the shoulder. So if you're familiar with the... Um, like those bird wing things we do. This is a very close cousin to getting the, the rotator cuff, the backside armpit turned on. Now as we're doing this move, we might just create a little, a little mental breadcrumb trail here. This is what we'll do in our chaturanga. So we'll pull, we'll pull our chest forward. We'll pull with these back shoulder muscles. We'll pull and the chest broadens and uplifts. And release. Inhale, we'll unwind. We'll switch sides. So with the right leg down on the ground, the sole of left foot on ground. Okay, I'm going to weave my right hand whoop, through the little leg window. And a flex, so that's my palm. My fingers point up. And my left hand may press down. Inhale, pull these knuckles back against your leg. Grow taller. Exhale, as I pull these knuckles back, as I pull that elbow back. So I can just guide myself into the twist using some, some different musculature, different connections through the spine. This isn't an action that we can work that frequently in yoga. It's just it's a place that can be absent of work. The, the elbow area, the wrist in this particular way, the shoulder like this. I can use this action to draw the head of my right shoulder back. And release. And those forearm muscles got a little a little burny. That's all right. <laughs> Let's unwind. Lying back, let's have the roll nearby, and that should do it. So when we lie on our back, we'll bring our knees over our hips, interlace hands behind head. Here we go, elbow to knee. Inhale, float head and shoulders slightly off the ground. It's really the, the, the abdominals and even the chest musculature, they turn on. A little abdominal pressure will send those backbones toward the earth. Exhale, reach the left leg straight up. Pull low belly down. Inhale, bend that left knee, keep the shoulder blades up, 
So those abdominals and those, some of that chest area is working. Exhale, reach the right leg straight up. Relaxing the tongue muscle, the head into the hands. Pull low belly down. Inhale, bend the right knee. Let's add a few details. A little abdominal pressure. Exhale, now reach the left leg straight up and start to draw the toes toward your belly. So you're pressing up through the heel bone. Now pull low belly down as you send the heel upward. Just feel what that gets into. Inhale, bend left knee. Pause, little abdominal pressure, keeping the back in place. Exhale, right leg reaches up, straight up. Now pull, draw the toes toward your belly. You're reaching heel bone skyward. Pull, low belly down. Inhale, bend right knee. Couple more details. You got a little shift in the tailbone if that's helpful for your back. Exhale, left leg reaches up, heel high, toes low, pull low belly down. And as you're pulling the belly down, relax the eye muscles, the tongue muscle, and the head into the hands. Good. Inhale, bend left knee. And use that little shift of tailbone if that delights your low back. And then exhale, right leg straight up. Heel high, toes pull low. And as you're drawing the belly down, make a concerted effort to soften the tongue, relax the head into the hands. Good, inhale, bend that right knee. Let's do two more on each side. Let's do those at our own pace. Leg is active, tongue relaxed. It's really neat if you play around with it, we can actually drive more movement in our body by using our tongue. What I'm suggesting us do is drive less movement, relax the tongue, and allow ourselves to feel a softened countenance through the, the head and the neck. Just we're heightening sensing by reducing drive. When you're through, looks like you are, grab your roll, we'll place it between the legs, and reach the legs up. Now, when you reach the legs up, if you feel a little um, stretchy in the backs of your legs, just start off with that mild sensation. As we go through these abdominals, I'll have us go heel higher and toes lower. So we'll gradually introduce a little bit more of that stretch sensation. So we can start by pressing up through the, the forefoot. Inhale into the low back. Get really full. Deep, luxurious breath, filling the pelvis. Hold that breath, squeeze the roll. A little shift in the tailbone is fine. Exhale, float the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. And as the tongue is relaxed, draw the low belly down. So getting a strong belly and leg move, but not necessarily with the assist of the tongue. We'll let that up. Inhale, bring the head to the ground. And now flex the feet a little bit, the ankles. So 
My feet are facing the ceiling like I might put a footprint on them. Hold, squeeze, roll. Curl tailbone. Exhale, reach up through the elbows, opening shoulders. Relaxing the head and the neck into the hands. Strong squeeze. Draw the low belly down away from the roll. Tongue relaxed. Good. Inhale, set the head down. Now, bring the heel a little bit higher than the forefoot. So you got to draw that forefoot, the toenails, closer to your abdomen. Hold, squeeze the, the roll. Curl tailbone. Now exhale, float the head and the shoulder blades up. Press the heels high. Flex, pull the toes toward navel. And as you're drawing the belly down, these legs might be working. Relax the tongue inside the mouth. Now inhale, set the head down, relaxing some of that squeeze. We're going to do two more on our own. Feel for engaging the legs vibrantly and consciously relaxing the tongue and the neck. Here we go. Two more on our own. Really strong legs, very relaxed lips. Good. And then we can set the head down, the feet down, and we can remove the roll. When we turn onto a side, Let's press up to standing. I'm going to kind of circle around into this dolphin. We're not forgetting it. We're just circling in. <laughs> so we'll take our wide stance, a horse stance. We're going to work a twisting horse stance. So I've got my palms atop my thighs. So we're coming fresh off those abdominals. <laughs> so hopefully the, the breath-pelvic connection is still pretty vibrant. So breathing into the pelvis, the genitals, the back. Let's go feet active. And now exhale, press that right hand into the right thigh. So we twist to the left. Now, Amy, I get really particular about my foot pressure. So if my back is feeling kind of a little achy or such, rather than just pushing the hand, I make sure I press both feet 50-50 pressure so that my twist doesn't just create that shearing feel. So you might just take extra kind of mindful notice of the pressure in the feet, the weight distribution in the feet. And now, as we start our breath in the pelvis, in the groin, grow that, wash that up through your core, we can even relax the head. There's another great place to relax the tongue and the eyes. And when we unwind this side, we'll come back centrally. On your next exhale, press left hand into left thigh. So we're twisting to the right. Now, as I'm twisting, I get 
very particular about my weight distribution. So I like keeping it 50-50. Now something I tend to notice in a pose like this is there can be a lot of um, contraction around the head and the skull. So I invite you to, as you're, as you're working with your breath, to connect the pelvis to the brain, to have that whole core access. Feel the neck able to soften. Feel the lips, the eyes, the brow softening. Just find out if you can get that breath wash, that little energetic fluency around the head. And inhaling, unwind, straighten legs. We'll just walk the feet back under our pelvis. And now let's set up dolphin. We'll move to elbows and knees. And once you set our up, geez, once you have the forearms set up in parallel or hands clasped, Curl the toes under, exhaling with neck relaxed. We'll take the knees off the ground. Dolphin. Let's sink down a bit into that left heel. Place the right foot, the toes of the right foot, around your left heel cord. We'll start to depress, to sink down that left heel bone toward the earth. Now if your heel touches the ground, great. You can lift the toe pads. And if that's still pretty easy, we can always inch that foot in a little bit. <laughs> now, as we introduce what can be a more stretch in the back of that leg, connect to breath and feel the, the back side, the spine side of body, the back of the head, lengthening, softening, easing open. It's common, I think it's really common, when we feel a stretch, when we feel a pull, to almost habitually brace, like, ah. <laughs> when we relax the tongue, when we connect to breath, when we soften our belly, we can create a little intervention in that brace moment. Now let's switch sides. We'll put the right foot down, use left toes, wrap them around right heel cord, and begin to sink that heel bone down. And just notice it's usually right in here, we're bringing a little more stretch to the back of that leg. You might even feel how the back of the head starts rearing. Let's feel the back of the neck soften. And if you're relaxing the tongue, you may feel the tongue just kind of resting on the roof of your mouth. You might also feel how that changes the posture of the neck. We 
reset the left foot down. Let's place the knees down. And get a rest out of there. So we'll do two things at the wall. I'll name them so we can get wall space appropriate. We're working chest opener at the wall, and then we're doing a chest opening in dolphin at the wall. Right? So let's, um, let's do that. The first chest opener is the one in a warrior stance. So when we take the warrior stance next to wall, about a foot and a half from the wall, the wall closest leg is forward in my warrior stance. And the wall closest hand is just out of my peripheral vision, about shoulder height. Let's begin here. And as you connect to your Ujjayi breath, this is a good moment to <laughs> escort the, the shoulder away from the earlobe, away from the jaw, and to feel that area around the jaw and the throat become softer. One of the good things about all of this softening, this gesture of release and the softening, is that it can help us attune to how energy is moving through the body, is not moving through the body. So we can s attune to these currents, these life currents in the body. Now, remain right here for a moment more. This is very subtle. You might like it, though. That move that we did in the very beginning of our, our, our practice, right? How does pulling the knuckles and the elbow, right? Pulling like um, the elbow back. Keep your hand connected to the wall. Enact a pooling, almost like you're pooling the elbow away from your knuckles. And that may actually help you open up the chest a different way. I don't know a better way to say it, so try it. <laughs> and release, we'll change sides. Warrior one. Wall side palm, just out of peripheral vision. I spread my hand bones pretty broadly. Now, lots of ways to incur a, a bit of stretch through the chest. One is to right, just pull, just to stretch the tissues. What I'm suggesting, if it's memorable to you that Pooling, it's like you're pooling the elbow back. It's like you're pooling the palm away from the wall. You're not really doing that, but that's an entirely different movement for the shoulder. And the front of the shoulder may appreciate that. <laughs> And release. Right. The second item that we work at the wall is that shoulder opening move. I'm going to show you this, or remind you of it, from Dolphin at the Wall. <coughs> there is a version that looks like forearm balance with our butt on the wall. 
So if you know that version, you're welcome to go into it. Um, but I'll just demo and describe this one here. So if I set up just like dolphin at the wall, clasping hands, and then step up, I push and arc chest bones toward the wall. So I'm intentionally arcing. Okay. So not, not so much an inversion, growing, growing vertically, but arcing. So a little mini, mini back bend. Okay. So I'll talk this in again. I set it up just like dolphin at the wall. Hands clasp. Make sure to clasp hands for this particular move. When you press the knees up, you'll feel heels against the baseboard. And then you'll step the heels up hip height. And then from there, it is a major, major push. Ooh, be careful on those windows, Vijay. <laughs> push, and you're arcing very slightly the, the, the chest wall, the ribs toward the wall. Not distressing the shoulder joint, getting particular that it's the ribs, the upper ribs, spreading, articulating, moving, arcing toward the wall. Now I use those heels on the wall, like heels prominently pressuring the wall, to pull my butt up to lengthen and lighten. Give it two or three deep breaths more. Feed that breath behind the chest wall, deep chest wall move. Not a shoulder joint distress, chest wall. Be discriminating in your arm shoulder pressure action. It's not a, uh, a shoulder distressor, but getting into the upper ribs. When you need to exit, you will step down one foot all the way down. Great. And then we'll come back to our mat standing at the top. For some suns. <laughs> Chair pose. Inhaling, bend knees, reach arms overhead. And reach up through those arm bones, just like we were redoing that, that dolphin chest opener at the wall. Arc, arc those upper ribs, lift them up. Exhale, fold forward, neck relax, tongue relax, eyes relax. Monkey, inhale. Use the hands to move the arcing chest forward away from the lap. Now we'll set the feet back. Chaturanga. Now here's that first practice move. Okay, my wrists are flexed. I'm going to pull my elbows back. I'm pulling the heads of the shoulders toward the ceiling as I lower. That's the move. That's that shoulder move. Let's do cobra, hands forward. Inhale, pull, pull the elbows away from the knuckles, drawing the heads of the shoulders back. Exhale, lower, downward dog. So 
So we'll work some shoulder shrugs in warrior two. Inhale, step the right foot forward. We're in a warrior two. And this first iteration, just let the, the, let the arms hang down. Inhale into the upper back. Bring the head over the pelvis, raise the shoulders up, squeeze. You're getting the tops of those traps kind of squishied. And then exhale, squish it up, pull them down. Lots of shoulder mush, just squeezy, squeezy, contract, 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 contract. All right, release. Inhale. Relaxing any contraction around the head. I'll squeeze the middle parts of your shoulder blades together. And as you're creating contraction, exhale, squeeze, drag, soften the brow. Gotcha. The old brain release. <laughs> it's really fascinating when we start to squeeze certain parts of the body, almost like stultify the motions around the brain and the head. So we're going to keep that head brilliantly open. Inhale into the back of the heart. And if you want to raise the, the palms up to squeeze, to generate that mid-back squeeze, bottom tips of blades move together. Exhale, squeeze and drag. Release. Part two, a little different. Draw the forearms parallel to the ground and the palms face forward. So you have to flex your, your fingertips up. Okay, This is going to be like a, a, a weightless a weightless chest opening chaturanga. So here we go. I'm going to push, move those elbows forward from my torso. Inhale. Now as you exhale, pull the elbows back and pull the thumbs apart. This is an exaggerated move. Okay, we'll do that one more time. Inhale, bring the palms out in front of you like halt, go no further. And then as you exhale, pull your elbows away from your knuckles. Pull the thumbs apart. Okay. So when we put our hands stationary on the ground, feel for that. Inhale, bring the hands to either side of the right foot. Exhaling. Step the right foot back, and here it is. Pull the elbows back. The hands don't move, but pull those thumbs apart. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. Inhale, the left foot forward, warrior two. Relax the arms. Shoulder shrugs. Inhale, we'll just let the arms hang down for this first pass. Raise the shoulders up, squeeze. You get a nice little squishy, squishy. Exhale as you squeeze the shoulders, the upper traps. You're pulling them down. Feel for releasing of the brow and the brain. Relax the squeeze of the shoulders. Inhale. Into back of heart. Feel the middle parts of the blades. Squeeze them. Exhale. Squeeze and drag. Just notice if your eyebrows or your tongue started pushing, curling up into a ball or pushing into the cheek or the roof. Okay, <laughs> one more. Inhale. Let go of the squeeze. Now for this one, we can go palm up, squeeze as if elbows toward each other, 
exhale, squeeze just the, the, the shoulder area. And as you pull down, can you relax the lips? Can you relax the tongue? Relax. All right. Now, part two, like a weightless chaturanga. Forearms parallel with the ground, fingertips point up. I'm kind of pushing like halt. <laughs> Inhale. Now exhale, pull the elbows back, pull the thumbs apart. And if you go way, way, way back into its natural conclusion, your hands may be wider than your torso. And your chest may feel broader. Let's do just one more. Exhale, pull the elbows back away from your knuckles. Pull the thumbs apart. Good. That's it. Inhale, set the hands down on either side of your left foot. Exhale, chaturanga. Here's the move. Let's see it in action. So you're pulling the elbows back, thumbs apart. There it is. Inhale, the upward dog or the cobra. The chest broadens. Yes, exhale, downward dog. Hopefully that helps some of those cobra and upward dog pieces. <coughs> Archer and warrior two. Inhale your right foot forward. If you use a strap, let the right hand lower it down to the left. Strap, towel, whatever you love. go. Yeah, so we got the right elbow up, left elbow down. Mm -hmm. And our right leg is bent. All right. Now, in our archer, let's work this kind of like that, mm, that chest opening stuff we did at the, w at the wall. So inhaling, can you use that right arm in a reaching action? to help pick up the ribs, the topmost ribs. You may feel some, a degree of opening around the, the breast, the chest, the heart. So it's a breath move, a breath working under those bones. Now here's the gig, if you're, as you're reaching up through that right arm, if you feel your lips pushing together, just catch it, relax the lip pressure. So learn if you can soften the heart by softening these facial components, jaw, lips, tongue, eyes, because in fact they share a great deal of nerve, the face and the heart. They share nerve pathways. So what we're doing in the heart can be expressed, often is expressed, in the mouth, in the throat, our voice, our hearing, our eyes. You can almost think of the face as this externalized heart expression. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Good news. Good. Let's release that archer. Just set the strap down anywhere. Lounge lunge. Inhale, left hand down, left knee down. Exhaling, reach back through that left leg.
inhaling. And when we unwind, I'm going to slide the right foot back and find our roll. I'm going to start doing some belly on roll stuff. Please make the roll a suitable diameter for your gut today. So if you had like a fried chicken and a whole pizza yesterday, you may have to adjust that. That uh, Here it is. may feel kind of stiff. <laughs> I find that if I've had sugary things or something weird like that, my gut can feel really stiff. But when things are nice and colorful and clean and beautiful to eat, my gut just feels like, ooh, yeah, let's lie on this thing. Reach back through those legs. We'll place the hands just in front of the shoulders. Inhale into the roll. Now, if you're still getting acquainted with the roll, like if you have a little bit of stiffness in the gut, just go super mild. And as you're exhaling, there's a little bit of a descent. And your hands are here to attenuate that, to pad it, to, to control it so it's not painfully fast. Right? So my hands are not doing so much work on uh, any kind of pooling. I'm inhaling into the belly, into the roll. As I'm exhaling, I'm letting my hands be like brake pads that kind of hit the brakes so that my torso weight can descend with grace over that roll. Because if I start to wince, right, I've just brought more contraction. Usually it's into the eyes and the lips and the jaw and the face. So wincing is kind of these contractile moves that to me feels like it stuffs energy and it makes it less fluid. So we'll exit for now. We'll, we'll do some more. Inhale the hands under the chest. Exhale, we'll press off, roll, move it off to the side, downward dog. Lunge, knee up, heel up. Inhale, right foot forward. So again, my left heel. My left knee, remain up. And bring the hands to leg or overhead as you see fit. Now just a, a refresher on some stuff we've been doing over the week because it might help the feeling in your back, Amy, is if I bring my feeling awareness to the pubic bones and the inner legs, so if I feel this lunge as occurring through the arch of my inner legs, through this pelvic bone in the front, you may feel just, just that attentional, that sensory shift alleviates wincing in the back. I know we, we, I often use the, the common forest cue of, you know, using your buttock muscles to support you. Well, sometimes that works. <laughs> but if I get into this lunge and I feel how the, the, the weight and the architecture, the, how this is being born through the front of the pelvis, the pubic bones, the pubic symphysis, you may feel your back get very, oh, you may feel good. 
And I actually bend my back knee to accomplish that and to feel that happening through the front of the pelvis. Inhale, we'll set the hands down. Exhaling, the right foot back. Let's set the knees down. Now, I've got a block between my ankles. If you have a block, set it in between the ankles and bring your belly down to ground. Fingertips grab the bottom of the butt for this boat variation. So now this is very butt-centric. <laughs> I will feel my buttock muscles contract. Squeeze the, the, the block with your inner ankles. So you're turning on your inner legs. Now inhale the belly into the earth. We're breathing, floating the chest bones forward. So I'm lengthening. Exhaling, reach back through the legs. Now, if one of your thigh bones, one of your hips lifts off the ground, you may have to relax it back onto the ground a little bit. And release. Inhale, hands under chest. Exhaling, downward dog. Lunge, knee up, heel up. Inhale, left foot forward. I'm kind of de-emphasizing the butt in our lunge this today and, and recently. The experiment here for, for me is when that weight is being translated through the front of the pelvis, does that feel nicer in the sacrum and in the back? So I'm just kind of speaking out loud my process here. It might reflect yours. Is I have to connect to my inner legs. I have to feel that my inner legs have some sort of connection to this bony area in the front of my pelvis. And if I can to create that ribbon of connection in my sense, my sense map of my body, I find the butt and the back can relax a lot. And when I don't have to clench my butt, I don't have to really clench my jaw either. So two for one. <laughs> All right. Inhale, place the hands down. Exhaling, step the left foot back. Now we know there's a block there. Let's include the roll. Place the roll under your abdomen. And as you lower, there's a block between your ankles. We're not going to overdo it on the roll. We just want to be really, let's make it nice. Make it nice. So once more, a wave dancer. I'm letting the breath move the body over the roll. Inhaling into the abdomen. Now keeping the legs engaged kind of floats my chest up and it floats my elbows up a little bit. As I exhale, I just use my palms like little brake pads. I just help slow the descent. And with each next deep breath, you may feel these waves of motion through the spine and under the gut. As you're breathing into the gut and underneath the heart, we're going to be here a bit. Wince free. 
Just feel what you're doing around the eyebrow and the eye. If you're doing a little like, ee, uh, like that little wincing thing in the face. So you're feeling that line of connection, that softening through line from the gut under the heart, right past the back of the face and into the brain. Letting the breath make all that travel, that whole through line. And then we can release. I think it's a beautiful way to discover where there might be little catches, little congestions. Right? Inhale, we'll go hands under the, the chest. Exhaling, let's press back to the knees. We'll move the roll. And press back, downward dog. Right. We'll arrive at standing. Inhale, step both feet forward, monkey. Exhale, fold, chair. Inhale, bend knees. Now, just as a note, we're in chair for a couple of breaths. Draw the arms up. Let's remain in chair. As you exhale, press down through the midfoot. Now, as I push through the midfoot, yes, I can very slightly shift my pelvis. Staying in chair. Use those moves we did. Inhale, reach with the arms. Pick the upper ribs up, away from your lap. Remain, exhale, reach out through the fingertips. Melt the tailbone down. There's one more here. Wince free. And on this exhale, stand hands to heart. Find your roll, place it between your legs, standing, back bend. <laughs> My preferred uh, uh, name for this is standing traction. <laughs> okay, so we're going to press down. So I use my thumb and forefinger and wrap it around the, the waist, the hip bone. It rolls between the legs. The roll, now if, if you have some, some pelvic area contractions that you're working with, you may not want to squeeze this at, at your strongest. So if you have hip pain, if you know that you're working with a, maybe a pelvic floor specialist, this may not be the best move to squeeze full on. But you can use the pressure to help you locate and feel your breath reaching the bottom of your pelvis, for sure. Okay. So the feet active. Inhale, the hands may press down. I'll show you the backside. I'm slightly bringing those elbows together. Exhale. Make sure there's weight in my heels. I'm not all pitched forward. Now inhale, pressing, lift the mid spine away from the low spine. Exhaling, the hands press, thumbs especially, and that tailbone can shift down. Now with those elbows drawn back somewhat, inhale, lift the chest bones towards sky another millimeter. And these final two breaths, getting that tremendous line of connection, but relaxing around the brain. Feel that the brain can receive this breath too. And release. Okay. 
So I want to offer two options at this point. I want to offer camel, and I want to offer dancer. So if you have some back tenderness still, maybe try camel. And you might try it with the wall. The benefit of doing so, if you have some back sensitivity, is that you can grow tall with the wall and minimize bend in the back. Okay. Would I use the roll? Yep, I would. Just a reminder, if you were camel, get lots of padding under knees and feet and plan on going at least a couple of rounds. If you put your ribs against the wall, you just have that sweet assurance of there being more traction than bend. Kay. The other option I suggest is dancer. I will be working dancer. And I will like a wall today. See. So, let's do it like so. And just a refresher, you know, dancer, big loop. And when we work dancer, you can use the wall at your side, reaching the leg away from the elbows, the elbows away from the knee. Let's plan on Camel for two rounds, eight breaths, or dancer, eight breaths on each side. Does that satisfy everyone's abilities and capacities today? If you need a different pose, please let me know. We can figure it out together. All right, freestyle time. Enjoy your eight breaths times two, I'll meet back with you in just a few moments. With each of these moves, I have observed a tendency for contraction at the brain stem and around the frontal lobe, the forehead. So as you're working these back bends, no matter how mild, no matter how deeply, keeping that neck in that head, an integral part of that energetic and that breath current, that flush. Yeah. We're probably getting close to working that second side or that second round.
How's that go, Amy? How's you feeling better? All right, good, I love that. All right, so let's say you've did a couple rounds, a couple sides. When you feel complete with that, let's have a seat. And we'll move into shoelace. I should say, uh, moving into shoelace, if you're unable to sit in shoelace without the use of hands, I would recommend getting back to a wall for this, for this iteration. Okay. I'm gonna take my fingers, whoop, right behind my brain, my sweet little, sweet little brain stem. <laughs> I've got my elbows quite close. Okay, feet active. And as usual, I'm not, N-O-T, not pooling on my head. I'm making the gram by gram uh, suggestions toward unfoldment. Inhale from sit bones. Under the brain, into the brain. And I'll exhale, reach up through the armpits, the elbows. Permit the head to relax in the hands. Let that head go, making sure it's over my pelvis. Inhale, reach those arms up. And we'll move into eagle. Exhale, the left elbow over the right. Get a feel for that. A similar uplifting quality here. Inhaling into the back of the brain, back of the heart. Exhaling. Feel that energetic, that breath wash through the brain. The face muscles soften. Brains are so great, and they can be even greater, <laughs> minus some of that contractile action. I observe some of that contractile action around the brain occurs in maybe exaggerated moments of disbelief or confusion or, right, oh, I just don't get something. You furrow the brows and we tighten the brain, right? When we do those contractions around the brain, it really is like a, no more information may come in, no more viewpoints past, past here, you know, contract, we brace against novelty. So relaxing those eyes. Okay. Now let's inhale, let's unwind the arms, let's unwind the legs. We'll do those two little things, other side. Shoelace, left over right, fingers at the base of the skull. Bring the biceps close. I'm just creating the suggestion of vertical elongation. Connect to breath. Spreading that from tailbone to brain. Exhaling, relaxing through the underbrain area as you reach up through the shoulder joints, the elbows. Good. 
That little Mona Lisa smile is also very effective in relaxing the jaw. The Buddha had one of those too. The Buddha had a great Mona Lisa smile. Mona Lisa had a great Buddha smile. <laughs> it's just those, that little, very softening to the jaw area. That's a heart secret. All right. You want to keep that head over the pelvis. Inhale, those arms up overhead. Eagle. Exhale, the right elbow over the left. We're feeling the brain effortlessly lift away from the heart, kind of untether. And when we release, inhaling, unwinding, Let's sit up for Shavasana, so add layers, whatever you need. Uh, if your back remains sensitive, um, you can put some kind of blanket, bolster, rolled up something under the backs of your knees. Yeah, that's a good one, Megan. That's one of my faves <laughs> right there. Why I love this, this core-based practice is that we really have to attend, sensitize to, and release, lighten our our felt sense of load, it lightens the body to feel toward a core, to feel our, our central most beingness. And when we lighten our load, our eyes shine.
Yeah, when you're ready. Bend the knees. Turn to a side. And press to seated. How great to be with you. I can feel you. It's wonderful. Namaste.